All right, here's your challenge problem for the day. Let's see if we can look at the motion of this object on this ridiculous setup here and make that into not only a position time graph, but a velocity time graph, and then finally also an acceleration time graph in no particular order. So we've got a small object that's moving this way with a velocity. It's starting at a position of 50 centimeters. It will then go across here, roll down the hill, then roll up the hill. By the time it reaches its finishing point, it's going to be at a position of zero centimeters, and it's going to still be moving. Okay, so we're not going to extrapolate what happens after this. This is the only part we care about. So with that information, your job is to draw a position time graph, a velocity time graph, and acceleration time graph for this object's motion. Okay, so pause the video, and then once you're done, unpause it, see if you get it right. So pausing video in three, two, one. And we're back. So big reveal time. Let's see how we did. So we just got to move this out of the way. And there's your answers. How did we do? Well, here's what I do. I always start by drawing the velocity time graph first. So if you look, we are going from 50 to 0, and we're going to the left. So we're definitely going to be having a lot of negative velocities in this. So if I've got negative velocities, let's do a little writing here in case we've got to take some notes, then I'm going to be living in this world. So this entire region up here is completely off limits. You cannot go here. All right, no velocities because we never turned around. So we start with some sort of negative velocity. It's constant because we're ball rolling, so we're not going to speed up or slow down. Then as we go down the hill, we're going to go faster. So we're going to reach a larger negative velocity, big negative velocity, down here. Then, as we go uphill, we're going to slow down, so we're going to start approaching a value of zero. And I said we never got there. Where we exactly end up, I don't know. So that's the velocity time graph. Once I have that done, then I can make my acceleration time graph. Acceleration is defined as the slope of the velocity time graph. So if I look, this slope is zero, so I have an acceleration of zero. This slope is negative, so I have an acceleration that's negative. And then this slope is positive, so I have an acceleration that's something positive. Each of these areas only had one slope, so we only have one line during each of those segments. Finally, I'm going to figure out my position time graph. Now it says to start at 50, so I put a dot at 50. The most common mistake is kids just put a dot here without thinking about it. So you have to put a dot where it says you start, and quite frankly, I put a second dot where I ended up, somewhere out here. Then I travel to a constant negative velocity, so I have a constant negative slope. So I drew that little negative line here. Then as I speed up, I'm still moving in the negative direction, so I am going to go further and further, or I should say closer and closer to zero is what I really should say. So I kind of put a dot here saying that, hey, I know I was here, I'm going to end up here. The question is, what's that going to look like? Since I'm speeding up, I should have a curve that's going to get a steeper and steeper slope. So this slope really should be the same as that slope. I know I'm not perfect, life will go on. But then you get a steeper slope. So we start with something here, and we get something that's steeper. So that means we're going faster. Then as it starts going uphill, we're going to slow down. So I'm going to go for that steep slope. I'm going to basically go back towards zero. I shouldn't actually approach zero because it says that I have a velocity that's not equal to zero. So it shouldn't be quite flat. You know, maybe it should be a little bit of an angle here. But like I said, it's just a sketch. I would not uh, super take off points or anything like that as long as you've got the right shapes because that's kind of our goal here. So we can translate and interpret velocity time graphs, acceleration time graphs, and position time graphs relative to actual situations. Okay? So if you got that right, awesome. If not, you know, come in, seek some help, try some practice problems again, and uh, yeah, it's quiz time. Good luck.